So look, man, it looks like a truck, basically, just of COVID just hit the whole NBA because everybody's going under right now. We're not going under as in they're going to die, but you know what I'm saying? Everybody getting affected. Now look at this. The Lakers play Minnesota on Friday night. Russell Westbrook, Avery Bradley, Dwight Howard, and Taylor Horton Tucker remain in protocols. Now, there's been a lot of more of these things, you know. After Anthony Edwards dropped 10 three-pointers against my Nuggets, he went into protocols, which actually I fuck with, you know what I'm saying? Keep his ass, bro. But nah, I'm just kidding. But look, a lot of players around the league, and it is just it just keeps growing and growing and growing, are going into these protocols. You know, I think it's been so bad that the Lakers the other day picked up Isaiah Thomas from the G League. Yeah, that's right. The 5'7", five, 5'9", five, sensation. And they brought him because, I mean, Russell Westbrook is going to be out for at least a couple weeks. They need somebody to run point guard. And look, Isaiah Thomas might be washed. Maybe he's not going to be that good in the NBA. But they literally signed him because of how hard COVID protocols has hit their team. So today, we are going to look over the potential solutions to these COVID protocols and how to turn down the amount of COVID contracted. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so the first thing the NBA can do in response to all these COVID cases is just go on about business. You know, they they also, they already considered this because Adam Silver already said that if somebody has COVID but doesn't have symptoms, I mean, they can play. He offered that suggestion, and I think a lot of players are going to take because, I mean, they still want their game-to-game -game checks. However, though, that is risky in itself. If you have Russell Westbrook playing with COVID against 15 other players, wouldn't it make other players contract it and gain symptoms? That is a very risky decision by a Adam Silver, but the NBA said that they are fully willing to do that. You know, the NBA lost out on so much money when they went to the bubble with the Disney bubble, and, you know, they're trying to make it back. Right now, by making it back, they will just not shut anything down. You know, I know Omicron is very serious. It has killed a lot of people already, and it is found in 3% of COVID cases, which means this is going to start rising. But the NBA says money is over health. And, you know, I'm not even going to blame them because that's how a lot of sports are going to be with this. So the first thing they can do is just go on about business. Keep max capacity stadiums. Don't have to COVID test anybody in the stadiums. The masks still aren't mandated. And players would just go into COVID protocols. Now, look, as a fan, I'm not against this completely because I think, yes, it is important for the players to be safe. But at the same time, you know, those players are very strong and they can't get through it. That does sound very narcissistic and disrespectful, but I think they will get through it. Now, as a fan, of course, I want it because I love watching basketball. But I do think that this problem is bigger than basketball. We should not just be looking at this as like how much basketball can we get out of this situation? We should look at it as these people have families and lives outside of basketball that they probably want to pursue. You know, if somebody who's about to retire has to keep playing in this league for the next three months and then they contract COVID, what if after they retire, they cannot do the things they want to because they do have COVID? There are always those variables and the NBA needs to heavily consider those because you do not want to put your players in danger. The second option is we can do what we just did like a couple months ago. A couple months ago, people were still allowed to go to games, but they very much cut off uh, the ability for fans to get close to the players. And I think that's a smart idea. It was like a 30 feet, you know, it, it was a thing that like fans could not come in within 30 feet of the players. And right now, I mean, they're like right next to the players because they let fans go onto the sidelines. But I do think that'll be impactful. Just make sure you mandate masks. Just make sure you mandate social distancing. I did go to one game with that, which was the Nuggets versus the Magic. And I think it was pretty, it was pretty calm and it was pretty controlled. So I think that's not a bad idea at all. If the NBA were to shut down anything or to slow down any of their money making, I think it'll be by this. I don't think they'll ever go to a bubble. And I think it's a very smart idea. Now, look, the fans, they do give you money based on ticket sales. But also people forget when a fan is at a game, they also pay for food. They also pay for like a jersey sometimes too. fans when they go to games. It's not really an everyday experience for every fan to go to every single game. So they normally splurge out. However, though, the last potential thing that they can do is go to a bubble. And yes, I did not like the bubble. I'm not going to lie. I like watching the basketball, sure. But I think the bubble, it was just a very ugly thing. You know what I mean? The, the court was ugly. I didn't like it at all. I think the lighting was very weird. It looked like they were just playing basketball in a cave with a bunch of lights. And look, I'm not going to be against the bubble if that happens to be, I mean, a Denver Nuggets championship or something like that. But I think it is a very viable option for the NBA to pursue. 
first of all, let's talk about the three options they have to create a bubble. My first option I think they can go to is Las Cruces, New Mexico. And you might hear this as like, what the hell are you talking about? Ain't no celebrity want to go to Las Cruces. That is a town of like 60,000 people. It's so deserted out there. But that's what makes it great. Now, Las Cruces already has a college team in which the NBA can just play in. I know that there are college games going on, but in this situation, the bubble would have like would happen like months after the day. It wouldn't happen today. So look, they would go into the bubble, and since Las Cruces is so uh, deserted, they have a lower chance of contracting COVID. And also, the Pan Am Center, which is in Las Cruces, New Mexico, does have a lot of cameras, and it's, it's just a basketball stadium. In the end of the day, when you do cut off the fans, you don't need to worry about the size of that stadium. I think that stadium can hold like 10 to 12,000 people, and that is a lot less than the average NBA stadium, but that's fine. You're not gonna have fans in the stadium. Also, because Las Cruces is dessert, things are cheaper out there. It's easier to live in Las Cruces or live in a hotel in Las Cruces for months than it is to live in Disney. You know, it's a lot cheaper. And Disney has already reopened their doors and let people come in and be customers. So I ha I do not think that's going to happen at all. The second option, however, though, is Disney. You know, they can do everything like they did in the past. You know, they'd make the players stay in their resort hotels. They make the players just stay on the thing the whole time uh, and seclude the players, which I'm not against completely. But I don't think it's happening because Disney has reopened their doors. But let's get into the last option they have for the bubble. And this is an MLB type bubble. Now, if you didn't watch the MLB in the 2020 postseason, then you don't know what I'm talking about at all. But the MLB, basically what they did is they would just have all their playoff games from each conference being played in one arena. When the Dodgers played the Braves in the NLDS, they stayed in one stadium. They were playing in the Texas Rangers stadium. And that was in one stadium in which they played in. And I think that's a really good environment or a good uh, option to play these games. It's in a neutral environment where both teams don't have home field advantage. Because obviously the Atlanta Braves aren't from Texas and the LA Dodgers aren't from Texas. So they also have that option. What they also did with that too was they put tarps around a lot of seats to make sure that fans couldn't get in within like 100 feet, maybe 50 feet of players. So for the bubble, the NBA has three options. They can go to a deserted city with a nice arena like Las Cruces, New Mexico. They can go back to the Disney bubble, which is very, you know, unrealistic. Or they can do an MLB type bubble where they're all in one stadium, one neutral stadium where nobody has home court advantage. Thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure you leave a comment on which one you would like to see. And peace out. Hey, come on, I got a bag on me. You try to take it, leave you stankin' like your last homie. She kinda cakey, little baby, put that ass on me. But I ain't that horny, do you got some cash for me? Why every time you ask him that, bitch, is that funny? And you keep trying to hold the strap, you won't slap for me. You too happy, I can tell you never had money. Every time you get on live, got a flash money.